Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC is just around the corner, and certain people got to play it early, including Joe Merrick of Cerebi, who gave us some really interesting news for the competitive crowd. We were told about a number of returning move tutors that were present in the Isle of Armor DLC back in Generation 8. These moves include Expanding Force, Triple Axle, Meteor Beam, and more. They could be a huge buff to plenty of Pokemon that we don't see often in VGC nowadays. So today, I'm going to be going through each one of these moves and what it could mean for the competitive landscape. If you enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I'm on my way to 500,000 subscribers. Let's get into it. This channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. All right, let's take a look. So, I mean, we're looking at like the move tutors that just came out uh, in the Cerebi uh, explanation of his uh, sneak preview of the DLC that's coming out in what day is today? Today is the 21st. So less than a month, like what, like 21 days almost. So yeah, uh, I want to go over these move tutors that Cerebi has confirmed coming back and also like the way that he explains it, the full I mean, there's a lot of stuff um, having to do with the uh, uh, second DLC, but uh, the main thing I want to talk about, of course, are the move tutors. He says, I did get a look at some of the new technical machines that are being introduced in the Indigo Disc. He said, I did get a look at some, so I don't think this is a conclusive list. There's a mix of returning moves such as Expanding Force, Triple Axle, Skitter Smack, Meteor Beam, Breaking Swipe, Scorching Sands, Curse, which is interesting. I don't think we've had a Curse TM in a minute um, or ever. Coaching, Electro Web, and more, as well as some new moves including the world's reveals of upper hand psychic noise, as well as some new moves uh, uh, such as supercharged cell and hard press, which is a steel move that deals more damage the higher the target's hit points. So I want to talk about these. Um, we'll just go briefly over some of the more important ones. Uh, but I'm, I feel like it's safe to say that all of these moves, mo most likely all these moves, maybe not all of them, um, are going to return. And that's pretty interesting. Actually, I want to check something really quick. So I have... Um, I should probably open a box, actually, a new box, VGC 2022, and one more box, because VGC 2022 will allow us to look at the old move tutors and what Pokemon learned them back then. We'll also up a, open up a regulation e-box, um, because I'm curious, does anything learn Steel Roller right now? I'm pretty sure something does. It's like just Iron Treads. So that makes me think that that move's returning. Uh, he didn't mention it uh, explicitly, but let's, let's talk about some of these moves. I think the biggest one we should uh, explore first is Expanding Force. So if you're unaware, the only Pokemon that gets Expanding Force uh, in... Wait, do they actually get it? I didn't know that. Hold on. VGC Regulation E. Expanding Force. Oh my god, I didn't realize that the uh, Lake Trio had it already. I thought it was just Armor Rouge. All right, but the issue is they can't use Expanding Force effectively without an Iron Ball because <laughs> um, they're not touching the grounds. They don't get the double power and stuff. But yeah, Armourage is the only Pokemon currently in the game that uses Expanding Force. It's 80 base power. If the user is on Psychic Terrain, 1.5 times power and it hits both foes. So that's a big thing. Expanding Force is the main draw of Armourage. Uh, it's like the only reason people really run it nowadays. It does have some other pretty attractive traits. You know, Armor Cannon is pretty strong. Uh, being able to hit the Steel types that resist the... Uh, the Psychic move is pretty big. It also does get Aura Sphere, which allows it to hit the Dark types that would uh, be immune to Expanding Force. And it, of course, has access to moves like Trick Room, uh, or if you want to get, you know, safe with it, uh, you can also run Wide Guard, which is a pretty common move set on. So you'll usually see, like, Expanding Force, uh, Wide Guard, Trick Room. Sometimes you'll see Protect over Wide Guard, and sometimes you'll see Heat Wave over Armor Cannon. Uh, but yeah, it's the main reason you run Armorage nowadays, especially next to Indeedee Female. Uh, Indeedee Female has Psychic Surge, which allows it to be one of the most annoying combos with Armor Rouge. You just run Protect, Follow Me, uh, Dazzling Gleam, and Helping Hand. And usually Psychic Seed or Safety Goggles, one or the other. You also sometimes see like Rocky Helmet. But these guys will just set up Trick Room and like sweep through your whole team with Expanding Force. Terra also helps that Armor Rouge a ton. But the thing that a lot of people don't know is, um, especially if you're just starting VGC this generation and didn't play it in 2022, uh, there are actually a lot of Pokemon that used to use Expanding Force. So, and excuse me for not being able to type today. I'm on my laptop, so I'm not used to the keyboard. Uh, I'm not home right now. I'm out in Boston. But yeah, there are a ton of old Expanding Force Pokemon. But the biggest one that you would see actually used to be Hatterene, 
Now, Hatterene was a terrifying expanding force Pokemon because it does a couple of things. One, unlike Armourouge, it underspeeds Amoongus by one point. So like quiet, quiet nature, zero speed is optimal for this thing. It also has access to Magic Bounce, which means that this thing on its own can't be taunted without like Mold Breaker or whatever. And your best way of dealing with it is with a one shot. So there were a couple of items that Hatterene used to run. The main one was Life Orb to deal just a ton of damage with Expanding Force. Also notably, Hatterene's Expanding Force is coming off a 136 special attack, where Armor Rouge, I believe, is 125. So even though it's just a little bit stronger, it is enough to make a difference with certain calculations. And actually taking a look at this, I'm really curious. Uh, I want to compare their bulk because Hatterene has low HP, right? But uh, it does have pretty decent defenses. So Armor Rouge is 85, 180. Hatterene has 57, 95, 103. So I think on the special side, Hatterene is definitely bulkier, but on the physical side, um, Armourouge is a little bit more reliable. But the reason you would want Hatterene over Armourouge is literally just the advantage of, hey, uh, I can't be taunted or anything. And also on top of that, some people aren't even running Life Orb. Some people still run Hatterene next to Ndidi, even though it doesn't get Expanding Force, just because the Psychic hurts that bad. But they'll run Covert Cloak, which means that Hatterene isn't able to be faked out. It doesn't care about rock slide flinches, which is one of the main ways to stop Trick Room if you're not prepared for it, uh, is just to spam rock slide. Because a lot of people are going to say this in the comment section because um, they're not familiar with the core. Why not just taunt either one of the Pokemon? And the main reason you don't is because if you're playing against like Ndidi Armourouge, right? If you're playing against this duo, the main taunt users in this format are prankster taunt users like... Um, you know, Tornadus or whatever. Uh, but beyond that, when this new format drops, one of the main taunt users is going to be Whimsicott, which is a really huge Pokemon to get in the DLC. So that gets blocked by Psychic Terrain. And even if you uh, even if you have a taunt user that isn't Prankster, so it doesn't get blocked by Psychic Terrain, uh, that taunt can just be redirected into the Ndidi with Follow Me, and then Trick Room goes up with Armor Rouge. So that's why Rock Slide is one of the more... It's a little bit of a scuffed way to stop the Trick Room from going up, but it's certainly a way. That's why the Armourouge tend to run, uh, not only for like Snarl, but obviously, you know, for Rock Slide, uh, Wide Guard. And Hatterene, that's the reason it runs Covert Cloak. It just doesn't care about any of that stuff. It also doesn't care about Snarl dropping its uh, special attack stat. So yeah, uh, Hatterene getting Expanding Force back is huge, but there's also a ton of new Psychic types that I think could use Expanding Force pretty well. Pretty much every Psychic type in the game got, ex uh, got access to Expanding Force last time. So some Pokemon that we could take a look at. Uh, really, we're going to be limiting it to Pokemon with high special attack. So yeah, uh, Monkey Dory actually getting Expanding Force would be pretty big for it. It is one of the faster special attackers. It also gets access to um, a wider variety of moves than Espeon, or at least like more useful moves. It gets access to some fun stuff. You obviously wouldn't click Fake Out on Psychic Terrain uh, Protected Pokemon, but versus like a Landorus, that's pretty useful. Uh, it does get access to let's assume expanding force but it also has stab on sludge bomb which is pretty big um and it also has access to, like nasty plot and stuff so that could be a really terrifying combo to play against uh other pokemon that would probably get expanding force that would be big what i'm looking at the wrong list let me just take a look at psychic types so as far as psychic type pokemon go ones with high special attack or low speed uh rabsco could be interesting actually 45 base speed means that it is slower than armor rouge um, and having an offensive Rapsco wouldn't be that bad. So you have to hear me out with this one. This is going to be a, a hear me out moment, right? Rapscut is hardly seen despite having access to one of the best moves in the game being Revival Blessing. And that's because its offensive presence leads a lot to be, um, desired, right? If it had access to Expanding Force, and it also already has access to bug moves like, um, Bug Buzz, which will allow you to hit the dark types that are immune to, uh, Expanding Force, that's pretty big. You could run like Revival Blessing, uh, Revival Blessing, Revival Blessing, Expanding Force, Bug Buzz, uh, and either Trick Room or Protect. Let's go with like Trick Room for this example, right? So if this thing got access to Expanding Force, all of a sudden, now Rabska is actually a pretty terrifying Pokemon to have to deal with because it hits pretty hard. You could run a Life Orb on it. You could. But I think that the, um, what's the item called? The Lepa Berry actually still wouldn't be a bad option for it. You'd run like Terra Grass to make sure you're not being put to sleep by Amoongus. Uh, and at that point, you have like an offensive option, you know, other than like Armor Rouge or like Hatterene that can also hit those uh, dark types for super effective damage with Bug Buzz off a 115 special attack. That hits pretty hard, actually. Um, but beyond that, 
If a crucial part of your team goes down, a lot of these Psy spam teams also include like an Ursaluna Blood Moon or just like a regular Ursaluna. You can bring it back with uh, with Revival Blessing and that could actually be like really big. So that's like a actually kind of a point in Rapska's favor if it gets it. I'm kind of excited to mess around with that to be honest. Uh, but other Psychic types, really, I think it's really just Rapska as far as like the Trick Room options go. Um, obviously, you know, we still have like a Rangru that can run it. Uh, really like if you are a psychic type and you want to click trick room and there is an indeedy next to you there's no reason not to run expanding force it's either a single target 80 base power move or it's a double target move that just annihilates everything so yeah um other pokemon technically like alolan raichu could run it technically slow king galar could run it but we really didn't see those pokemon back in the day uh iron lee oh oh wait this one could be pretty big oh wait no it's not a special attacker i'm sorry iron leaves is so bad that i always forget what it's like attacking stat is so uh that's really it for the expanding force users there could be some other pokemon that come back in the dlc uh that aren't in the game right now like let's let's take a look what, what are there, what are some psychic types in the game that might not uh appear until the dlc um i'm pretty sure like soul rock and lunar are coming back but those aren't really big pokemon reuniclus could be pretty huge i think that reuniclus is actually like a really solid pokemon that a lot of people sleep on um i mean obviously calyrex shadow is going to get access to it again even though i really hope it doesn't but yeah beyond that like as far as the non-restricteds go that's like the list of pokemon i think will be useful with it uh so that's pretty interesting uh other moves that are returning some important ones uh expanding force triple axle is a big one we'll take a look at that one we'll also look at meteor beam i'm going to skip over skitter smack because that move never really mattered in the grand scheme of things um but as far as triple axle pokemon go i don't think anything actually learns it in this game yet yeah literally no pokemon learned triple axle so the pokemon that learned triple axle prior in generation 8 was pretty interesting um there was like a good amount of fighting types. There was also a good amount of ice types. Uh, some of the main users were, of course, Weavile, aka Diet Chen Pao. So I so here's my thing, right? Chen Pao is strong enough of a Pokemon that I genuinely hope it doesn't get triple axle, even though like every ice type did literally look, look at the Pokemon that got triple axle. Freaking what is it called? Frostmoth got triple axle. Tell me why Frostmoth got triple axle. How does it even use that move? So yeah. Um, as far as triple axle Pokemon go, I genuinely hope that Weavile gets it and then we just, you know, don't bother giving it to like many other Pokemon because Weavile definitely needs the buff. Chen Pao doesn't need it. However, if it does get triple axle, oh, we are in for a world of trouble. So the way triple axle works, so I just checked, it goes 20, 40, 60. So it's a 120 base power at the end of the day if you manage to land all three of them. Chen Pao does not need a 120 base power move. Uh, Weavile does. <laughs> it really does. Because Chen Pao already has access to like moves like Ice Go Crash and stuff. So I genuinely hope it doesn't get that. But other triple axle Pokemon that could return here. Um, not triple arrows. Triple axle. Uh, as far as attack, high attack Pokemon. Aramosa, I'm pretty sure isn't coming back. Gallade could run it. Zarina definitely would enjoy it. Alolan Sandslash, it might give it a little bit of a niche. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything that really qualifies a Pokemon for learning Triple Axle, and I really don't see any through line. Is there any Ice type that doesn't learn it? I don't think so. I think every Ice type basically learns it. That's like available in the game. Um, but I don't know. I guess there are a few Ice types that don't learn it. But yeah, uh, if we assume that most Ice types get it, that could be kind of big for Satitan. Uh, I actually think that's a Titan with Triple Axle would be kind of interesting. You're more likely to hit Triple Axle three times than not, from what I can tell. I don't, I've never really seen anyone miss a Triple Axle. It's very rare that you hit two of them. So if the Titan did have a 120 base power move, uh, effectively that broke Focus Sashes, that could be kind of big for it. I think that would actually be really nice for the Titan. Um, it is a little bit unreliable and sometimes you would want the Ice Go Crash flinch, but I don't know. It could be kind of big for it. I think that's actually a really cool move. Other moves, Meteor Beam, that's what I really wanted to look at. So Meteor Beam is a really interesting move because the through line with Pokemon that learn Meteor Beam is they're either rock types or really, 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 really old. <laughs> and that's kind of cool. So like the Pokemon that learned it would be like Eternatus, Aerodactyl, Arctivish, uh, Bronzong, basically anything that evokes like a space theme or like an ancient theme or is just like rock type. So some of the best uh, Meteor Beam users back in the day uh, were the likes of Celesteela. That was a Pokemon that used it, but I don't think it's returning in the DLC. 
Uh, we also saw a Colossal run it, but only for extra power on its G-Max move. And other Pokemon that ran it, I'm, I'm like drawing a blank here. Uh, Aurorus would run it if it had access to it. Oh, Nihiligo was a big one. That was like the biggest Meteor Beam user. But beyond that, we really didn't see a lot of Meteor Beams. The thing that I'm concerned about is Paradox Pokemon from the past getting Meteor Beam because the through line is that these dudes are like old, old, right? So if we take a look at the Paradox Pokemon, so if we just use the Paradox filter, aka Protosynthesis, and organize by Special Attack Step, I think that we can expect most of these guys to get Meteor Beam. Fluttermane is really scary. I don't think it would run it because it already gets Power Gem, and honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but Walking Wake getting Meteor Beam would be pretty interesting. Uh, it's a Water and Dragon type, and having access to a move that get, allows it to... Uh, hit things like it has a choice specs after one use is kind of big so you can imagine like a power herb meteor beam set on this guy like we used to see on other pokemon so if it gets like meteor beam and then we give it like draco meteor why not uh probably isn't getting scald what was its move hydro steam yeah hydro steam and then protect that's actually a pretty terrifying move set especially coming off a 109 special uh 109 speed because this guy, if you run it on a Sun team, right? 177, 177, let's decrease that by one point. Put it into HP. Now it has a boosting nature on its speed, or now it has a boosting speed um, protosynthesis. Then you click Power uh, Meteor Beam and just hit something. You can also run like Terra Rock if you want to get crazy with it. It would just smack things around, dude. Then you have a choice specs and you're like super fast, just spam Hydro Steam. Kind of a crazy Pokemon in concept. Uh, other Pokemon that might get it, if we look at some rock types from rock type if we look at rock types from generation 9 uh garganical would probably get it glamora is actually one that could be kind of huge now glamora is more known for its focus sash sets but you could see a glamora possibly running um even like an unlike an assault vest set you could actually make the case for it but i think it's more likely that you just run like the power herb uh so yeah power herb glamora could become a thing it ends up being like actually a pretty terrifying special sweeper you run timid max max sort of like literally just like nihiligo actually <laughs> this is just a uh, modern day nihiligo so yeah uh meteor beam I'm trying to think like how you would do this uh meteor beam sludge bomb spiky shield and then your final move would probably be energy ball terra grass or you could even run power gem some nihiligo would run power gem as their final move even though they already had another rock move because it would just allow them to spam uh, a powerful attack in that way other rock types that i'm probably missing rock with high special attack stats preferably Hisui and arcanine you might get away with it i really doubt it um iron thorns would probably get it but you don't want to run that on that guy and yeah uh wow is really is iron thorns like the next highest special attack I don't, wow that's that's pretty lame maybe probo pass maybe mag cargo i don't know could be a big move for certain pokemon but we're pretty unsure as to who's gonna get it next move breaking swipe I mean, Breaking Swipe was a move that was distributed to a pretty decent amount of Pokemon. Um, it was mostly Dragon types, obviously. But it was a pretty cool move. Uh, you didn't see too many Pokemon run it. Sometimes you would see a Dragapult. Sometimes you would see like an Assault Vest or Aladon. I think that the biggest benefactors uh, or beneficiaries of Breaking Swipe would be probably the Gudra line. Hisui and Gudra would enjoy Breaking Swipe. That's kind of a cool move for it. It would allow it to be more bulky on the physical side while also having an attack that actually does damage that isn't Body Press and Heavy Slam. But the issue is you would have to get rid of something and it would probably be Protect. So the only way I could see you running it on that guy would be on like an Assault Vest set with like Breaking Swipe um, as like your only physical move. Uh, Flash Cannon, friggin' Draco Meteor, and then like a filler move, maybe Flamethrower or whatever. So that's like an option on Hisui and Gudra. Um, other moves. Upper hand. Uh, we can talk about upper hand in a second, but curse. I don't think we've ever gotten a curse tutor. Am I dumb? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if I'm dumb about that. But curse is usually just like a move that you just kind of learn. So if we look at curse users from Gen 9, there was a lot. Uh, wait, was there a tutor back then? I don't know. I didn't realize all these Pokemon could curse. Huh guess people just didn't use it but yeah so curse is kind of big for a few pokemon i think that snorlax might have access to curse right now pretty sure it does yes it does have curse right now but as for curse users in current 
Gen 9 VGC, Avalug, Annihilate probably wouldn't run it, Caparaja, Dondozo. I mean, there's a decent amount of Pokemon. I don't think it's going to be that big of a game changer, but if it's a tutor, that's where things get kind of crazy. Like, if we look at the Pokemon with high HP stats, those are going to be the main curse benefactors. Curse Regidrago could be interesting, actually. I would actually love to see that. Um, ooh, wait. Okay, hold on. If Ting Lu gets curse, that's actually kind of a crazy... That'd be kind of a crazy buff, because you could run, like, Leftovers Ting Lu with Curse, Stomping Tantrum. Because uh, the main thing with Ting Lu is the fact that it doesn't have any, like, boosting moves, right? But if it gets Curse, that's insane. Uh, so Curse, Stomping Tantrum, probably Throat Chop, and, like, Protect. That's actually, like, a terrifying wall, now that I think about it. Huh, that could be crazy. That could actually be a crazy one. Um, other moves that they mention... Uh, Electroweb, Coaching. So Coaching is one that I don't think is going to be that big. You didn't see too many Coaching Pokemon back in the day because um, it was mostly limited to like fighting types. And the only real Coaching Pokemon were the Prankster Coaching Mons, like Riolu. In fact, it was the only reason to run Riolu. Zamazenta did run it next to like uh, Groudon, uh, but I don't know how big that's going to be with Dynamax being gone. Uh, I don't see too many useful Coaching Mons, to be honest. I think it would just be like Prankster Riolu again, and that's basically it. Um, but it's it's very unlikely we would see Riolu uh, see any usage without uh, the automatic or with, without like the instant trick room trick that you can do uh, it, with Dynamax active. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't know who would even want coaching in this game. But yeah, so coaching Electroweb. Let's talk about Electroweb and then we'll move on to Hard Press and then we'll talk about some moves that I think are likely going to return. We already know that Poltergeist is back in the game. Burning Jealousy is also back in the game. It's mostly Terrain Pulse, Rising Voltage, and Misty Explosion, like the other like big moves uh, with the terrains that I think are probably going to return. And yeah, uh, here, let's take a look at Electroweb. So Electroweb is a pretty interesting one. It is a move that Electro types typically only have access to, unless there's one that I'm forgetting that doesn't, that isn't Electro type. Actually, I'm pretty sure like Caterpie gets Electroweb. <laughs> here, Electroweb. Yeah, the Caterpie line gets it, but... Regieleki gets it, Feramosa, Tabu Koko, Thunderous, Raichu. Uh, I know that sometimes Thunderous Therian would run it, but beyond that, you didn't see it on too many other Pokemon. It was mainly just like a Regieleki exclusive move, but there could be some Pokemon that do get a huge buff from having Electroweb. If we take a look at purely the electric types with high speed stats, I think that Hisui and Voltorb would legitimately have a niche in this case, uh, because it would be a grass electric type with access to Electro, which it likely will have. It likely will have Electroweb, because like every electric type gets it. So, Electroweb, whoops, I could find it, oh, I just can't spell, there you go, Electroweb, and as far as grass moves go, probably Leaf Storm, you could make a use for, or you can make a case for Chloroblast, but I really doubt it, so like Electroweb, Leaf Storm, Protect, and like Screech could be a pretty decent um, move set for it with like a Focus Sash, and probably Static. Maybe even Aftermath would be a decent one. Just like Timid, Max Max. And it's like a Regieleki, but it has access to grass coverage. So it can hit the um it can hit the ground types without having to uh waste any slot on or having to waste like your Terra immediately. So that could be kind of big. Beyond that though, Electroweb users, as far as like electric types go, I really don't see too many in the current gen that would like it. Maybe Iron Hands could run Electroweb, and that would be actually a pretty decent buff to it. Just because it, like assault vest iron hands is already a thing. Usually it wants to run just, you know, fake out, uh, drain punch, heavy slam, and wild charge. But you could drop one of those moves. Most likely you would drop heavy slam for Electroweb, and that could be um, a decent move set for it. Uh, but beyond that, if we just take a look at like, fast Pokemon, that might get it. Um, I'm not seeing too many Pokemon I think would probably get access to it. Yeah, no, uh, I really don't see any new Pokemon that would get it. Nah. But yeah, uh, Ogre Pond. What moves would Ogre Pond get out of this list? If I could guess one move that Ogre Pond might get and it terrifies me, it might be Triple Axle, but I really doubt it. Uh, but yeah. Oh yeah, so Hard Press. It's a steel move that does more damage the higher the target's hit points. And there's only one move I can think of that works that way. It's not your hit points, it's the target's hit points. So if we actually look at uh, Regigigas, Regigigas has a move called Crush Grip. More power, the higher HP the target has. And it's a normal move, and it's physical. I'd imagine Hard Press is literally the exact same move, but Steel-type. So, 
as far as Pokemon like that go, I, I don't think that we're going to see too many Pokemon run it. But if we look at high attack stat steel types here, steel, high attack stat, I doubt King Gambit would run it. It already just doesn't run steel moves. Caparaja probably wouldn't run it. Iron Treads could make a case for it. It's 112 speed. Actually, Hard Press would be kind of cool. Um, it would allow you to, if you're running like the speed boosting protosynthesis Iron Treads, it would give you a 150 base power steel move that just could one shot a ton of Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, I, I doubt this is going to be like one of those moves that gets used a lot. It's going to be like corrosive gas, like as far as how big it's going to be in usage. Uh, Misty Explosion, you don't really see too many Pokemon run that. Uh, Steel Roller, I believe is, there's only like one Pokemon in the game with it, and that's Iron Treads. Uh, Rising Voltage, that's one that I'm kind of interested in. Rising Voltage could be big for a few Pokemon. So, I actually think that the, uh, Quark Drive Mons, if I can type Quark Drive, I actually think the Quark Drive Mons would get a lot of value out of Rising Voltage, and I'm pretty sure they're gonna get it. So, the main ones obviously be the high special attack ones. If Iron Bundle gets Rising Voltage, that'd be insane, but I was thinking it would be more like Iron Thorns, Iron Leaves, Iron Hands, and Iron Moth, if anything. Maybe Iron Treads, even. Possibly Iron Valiant, just because they're like robots, that could be a big thing. Uh, other electric types. Pinkurchin, obviously, it really missed this move. This was the only move keeping Pinkurchin even mildly uh, within the metagame in Generation 8. Uh, but yeah. 91 base special attack, rising voltage would be pretty big. If you don't know how rising voltage works, uh, basically it's a single target electric move. Here, rising voltage. It's a single target electric move. It was 70 base power. I had to check that. I always forgot. Uh, and it's double power if the target is grounded with electric train. So it doesn't matter if you are. It matters if the target is. So that was pretty big for electric types back then. Uh, you would sometimes see like Zapdos run it even. Uh, Tapu Koko didn't get access to it, unfortunately. I really wish it did, uh, but we're not even certain if the Tapus are returning. But I hope they are. That could be kind of big. So yeah, uh, those are the tutor moves that we saw. Uh, I don't think that any of these other moves will matter too much. Maybe Terrain Pulse, but that, was, that wasn't even that big on like Pokemon with, you know, Mega Launcher. Like you would only kind of see it now and then. But yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on the tutor moves that we know are returning as well as a couple that may or may not be returning. It was just kind of big that we saw um, these players that, uh, or these uh, content creators and like news reporters that got access to like the uh, uh, game early. It, it's kind of big to know that these moves are returning and we can sort of do some prep work with that uh, as far as theory crafting goes. So yeah, uh, those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.